So uh, welcome to uh, another installment of our recipes um, here at Edinburgh School of Food and Wine. My name is Steve um, and today we're going to do something really, really quick, really, really simple um, and it's called ceviche. So uh, perhaps you've heard of it before. It comes from South America um, and it's a type of fish preparation um, that's really, really quick, really, really simple where um, acidity um, in terms of the uh, citric acid here from uh, lemon and, or, or orange and lime juice essentially kind of denatures the protein in the fish which really acts as kind of cooking it so the acidity really kind of cooks the fish. Uh, the fish that we're going to use is sea bream. Um, okay you can use any fish you can use cod, uh, you can use sea bream, sea bass, um, you can use all sorts of things. Um, you know sole, um, I've seen it done with scallops, uh, loads and loads and loads of things that you can do. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about this fish. Um, uh, this is farmed fish, uh, which is ultimately more sustainable than um, uh, than wild fish. Um, and this fish has been farmed in a uh, in an, uh, an unintensive manner. Um, so we're going to remove the skin. Now this is quite tricky. You can ask your fishmonger to do this. Um, I have a wee bendy knife, which is uh, primarily for fish preparation. And what we're going to do is we're going to start at the tail end because I would rather waste a little bit of flesh at the tail rather than at the head if I have to. And then we're just going to go in with this knife. It doesn't have to be a bendy knife. Um, and then pinch that skin. And then you're actually looking to just keep a little bit above that skin. So a couple of millimeters. And once we've done that, then you'll see why. Okay. So you've not been left um, with any of that silver skin on the fish and all of that bloodline and that silver skin is still on the fish skin itself. So therefore, if I was to get really, really tight to that, then you would see all that bloodline, which can be a little bit bitter and that silver skin. So um, we discard that or you can use it to, uh, you can crispen it up by baking it in the oven and then you can serve it as a shard. But, you know, let's think about um, you know, not being too chefy at the moment. Um, again, pinch that fish. Keep a couple of millimeters above that skin. And then that goes out of the way. Now, you can, if you like, just lift out that little bit of red kind of bloodline. Like I said, it can be a little bit bitter. I don't, um, there's many, many, many times that I've left it in. You, um, but, you know, you can lift it out if you want to kind of achieve perfection. Um, and then from there, we're really looking for kind of bite-sized pieces. So therefore, we're going to come down. Now, it goes without saying that although this fish isn't really raw and the, ve and the acid is cooking it, you do want to make sure that... Um, you know, you, you get nice fresh fish, okay? So what to do is um, when you buy your fish from your fishmonger, you go to your fishmonger, um, in the first instance, probably best not to go to the supermarkets, go to a fishmonger, they know about fish, that is their job. The people in the supermarkets don't know about fish. Um, and also tell them that you're going to be serving it raw. Um, because, you know, sometimes, you know, Fishmongers might tell you that fish is super fresh, <laughs> you know, but it's only really when you tell them that you're going to be serving it raw that, um, that they might just go to the back and get you, you know, that ultra, ultra fresh stuff. Um, so that fish has been cut into nice fat strips. And then from those strips, they're cut into kind of bite-sized cubes. And then we're going to pop that into a bowl. Um, so we're back. We've washed our hands. We've got our fish uh, cubed uh, in the bowl, our sea bream. And we can start to think about the rest of the ingredients that we're going to use for this uh, dish. So um, it's any citric acid, okay, but particularly uh, lime. Um, I'm also going to use orange uh, for a little bit of color, a little bit of contrast. Um, we're going to use a chili. I've got two chilies here. So this is a scotch bonnet. 
um, and this is just a, a standard, if you like, uh, chili. Um, so obviously this is going to be incredibly hot. Uh, this isn't going to be so hot. Um, so we'll come on and talk about that later. Um, we've got a little bit of coriander. So in fact, two forms of coriander. So coriander seeds and coriander leaf. Well, this is actually micro coriander. Don't really worry about that. Coriander, just chopped coriander is absolutely fine. Um, and then some form of allium. Yeah, so some form of acid, some form of allium. The allium in this case that I'm using is red onion. Um, and then, I mean, from there, it's really kind of all about um, uh, mixing it together. Um, so, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it as we go. So firstly, roll your uh, limes and that's gonna break down the cell structure, okay? And that's gonna allow you to get more juice out of them. Okay, so, you know, obviously these limes come from quite far away. And um, so therefore, sometimes they can be a little bit tired. Um, and they say that you can also put these, they can put the limes in a microwave for a few seconds, but we don't have microwaves here, so. So, this is, you know, a nice dish for a dinner party. It's different, it's fresh, it's colorful, um, it's tasty. Um, and I think, you know, that actually a lot of the time when we eat fish, and we really, really enjoy eating it kind of raw, you know, or certainly from my own perspective, you know, I love uh, raw fish, tartar, um, ceviche, or curing it. So natural, seems so just in keeping with, you know, where fish comes from, you know, it's fresh. Um, so that's the lime juice. And then just to balance that out, I'm gonna add a little pinch of sugar, okay? You needn't necessarily add sugar if you don't want to, but I find that it just gives the dish a wee touch of balance. And then we're gonna mix that together, okay? And what happens now is the fish starts curing, yeah, or cooking. Um, so, uh, you know, you needn't worry about this fish being raw, you know, so uh, the longer you leave it, then the more it cooks, yeah, so the more the texture will change. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some segments of orange. Now I'm taking the top and the bottom off the orange and I'm just gonna squeeze that juice in there as well, okay? Not wanna waste anything. And then if you imagine going from the North Pole to the South Pole, follow all the way around and all the way around. Okay. And this is gonna to be to remove the segments of the orange to give you a little bit of interest in the ceviche itself, I've seen people add avocado, slices of grapefruit are really nice. Um, you can put spring onions and things in here, but I'm gonna add these segments. Now, um, you, it might be tricky to see, but obviously, you, you, or you'll know from having eaten an orange that there are little um, pithy kind of segment dividers, and you go down the left of the right one, and the right of the left one, and you lift out that segment. Left of the right one, right of the left one, and then lift out the segment. Okay, now bearing in mind, of course, that your hand is on the other side of this knife, okay? So there's no pressure in terms of your hand on that knife. Okay, it's all just about l gently lifting out these segments. You can do this on the board if you're more comfortable. So a few segments there. And I can see here in this bowl that actually the fish is already starting to change color. It's starting to go white. And that is a sign that it's starting to cook. You leave it too long and it starts to dry out. Um, so it's all about keeping it that nice length of time, I would say somewhere in the region of kind of five to 10 minutes. Now, chili. Scotch bonnet chili. I'm using the end of it. It's actually the the white kind of pith of the chili that's the hottest part of the chili, so it's not the seeds. The seeds are hotter than the flesh, but the white um, uh, part of the chili is actually the hottest. Um, so I've tasted these before, and I know that the end of them isn't too, too hot, so I'm gonna add around about a teaspoonful um, into that dish. 
um, and then I've got the pop of some toasted coriander seeds. So these have just been toasted in a dry pan and then they're going to give a little nice poppy kind of crunch. And then we're also going to add some red onion. Even if you see the the wee bits and pieces that I'm 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 kind of getting rid of essentially, even those are full of colour. Um, so you know this is a great kind of summer dish. Um, just, just just kind of reeks of summer, isn't it? Um, okay, so we're going to finely slice that onion. Really, really important that it's finely, finely sliced. Okay, so we're going to adopt that technique of pushing down and away, down and away down and away okay in order to give us very 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 thin slices okay so you don't need very much onion for this okay in fact there's a little bit too much there okay so we've got our chili we've got our red onion we've got our lime juice a little pinch of sugar Okay, and then from there we're going to finish with a little bit of this micro coriander or chopped coriander. And then I like to add just a tiny little touch of rapeseed oil. I just find that that brings everything together. Okay, and then of course we still have to season it. So, salt. A little touch of pepper, but remember you shouldn't need too much pepper because of the chili. And then we're going to give it a little taste. Absolutely perfect. And then it gets spooned into a bowl. And then that's it, our ceviche of sea bream with red onion, oranges, lime, chili, and coriander.